Chairperson. Uh, at the outset, I would also like to thank Dr. Bansi sir for having me here in this wonderful city of Ahmedabad. So I think we've been discussing a lot of triple drug combinations now, and I think it has become even more complex to practice at this point in time that some of them have flooded this market, right? These combinations are not available elsewhere. The DCGI has been uh, probably kind enough, or I don't know whether it's, they've been too liberal in approving these combinations. Uh, but how do we use them? If you actually look at this triple truck combination, it is a tricky combination, right? I wouldn't straight away use this combination in patients who are new on their journey with diabetes. However, this is there at this point in time. Let's understand where we can use this, right? Now, we have enormous burden of diabetes in India, right? That is something that we are all cognizant of. Now, the mean onset of diabetes is steadily declining. Right? Despite the plethora of agents, despite the incredible based therapies, SGLT2 inhibitors, we were even discussing whether the sun has set on sulfonyl ureas. Now, we clearly know sulfonyl ureas are here to stay, and that at some point in time, Many of these patients, we are pushed for maximum OADs, right? I think there are a wide spectrum of patients in this part of the world. I think at that point in time, maybe the triple drug combination can come in handy, particularly because it, it improves adherence. The 10% of the allotted US healthcare budget is lost only because of poor compliance. <clears throat> That's billions of dollars of money, right? Now, it is not that easy for a patient to take multiple pills all the time, right? Now, that is the probably winning point over here. That's the only winning point here, right? Because otherwise there's no flexibility. Now, what are the guidelines that say, when do we think of dual therapy? When do we think of triple drug therapy? Of course, when the HbA1c is over nine. Now, what are the three molecules that we are talking about? Metformin still continues to be the gold standard. What about glimepride? This uh, is a newer generation sulfonylurea. Of course, we've been using it for more than 20 years now. And we are concerned about beta cell deterioration, hypoglycemia, so on and so forth. We were also concerned about cardiovascular safety, right? Because when DPP-4 inhibitors was first rolled out, when we looked at the severe TIMI trial with saxagliptin, DPP-4 inhibitor had a risk of heart failure. Now, suddenly there was a lot of, you know, concern that none of the sulfonylureas have dedicated CVOTs, right? So would sulfonylurea be cardiac friendly, cardiac safe was a concern. But however, the Carolina trial compared, it had an active comparator with Lena Glipton, assured safety that glimepride also was cardiovascular safe, right? So this is a molecule that can be judiciously used in type 2 diabetes. Of course, I'll be vigilant in patients of hypoglycemia, right? When you're using glimepride, you would also think of always hypoglycemia. But then, yeah, as I mentioned, it is cardiac safe, wealth of experience, weight neutral, maybe marginally weight gain is possible. And, you know, the most important part is start on a gentle dose, you know, very optimum dose, which does not kind of whip the pancreas and result in hyperglycemia. You know. Now, when you use a very optimum dose, then you may not even accelerate beta cell deterioration, right? Without causing hyperglycemia. I mean, keeping patients devoid of hyperglycemia. I think that's how we have to work with the self ideas in general. Uh, SGLT2 inhibitors, I'm not going to dwell into this. We know that the apagliflozin, the uh, declared TME trial included patients with high risk factors. I think probably that was the important study to pave way for multiple trials that have come in the journey of SGLT2 inhibitors because this was one trial <coughs> which showed signals of cardiovascular heart failure reduction even in patients with established risk factors but not established disease, right? Think about fluorescent was discovered 100, 150 years back, but it took so many years for SGLT2 inhibitors to come into the market. And suddenly after a couple of trials, I think every, every, every uh, uh, RCT became probably a milestone in their journey, right? Because paving way for new therapeutic indications, breaking all a newer a laboring revision, so on and so forth, right? So DAPA is something that we know, extra glycine benefits, cardiovascular safety, um, uh, addresses the entire metabolic spectrum, right? Including the weight, has an effect on uric acid, almost as a third add-on antihypertensive, reduces your uh, 
blood pressure to uh, equal to a third add-on antihypertensive, knocks out about 80 to 100 grams of glucose uh, every day, right? So you generally see the desired body weight reduction in about, in about say 16 to 20 weeks. Now the advantage of combining SGLT2 with glimepiride is you may be able to mitigate the weight increase effect of insulfonylurea. So net net you may actually get a weight reduction using the triple drug combination. Right, pill burden, that's something that I've already alluded to. You know, for a chronic nature of diabetes, obviously, if you can reduce the pill burden and the bill burden, it is obviously a pragmatic way of approaching, right? That is something that we know. So glucose lowering has changed dramatically over the years from, you know, having just a single-minded glucose lowering approach to addressing multiple pathophysiological factors contributing to hyperglycemia, right? Now, we have a more comprehensive approach, right? We just don't look at only glucose lowering. We address as many factors contributing to hyperglycemia. So, when we do that, the A1C reduction is far more durable, right? Now, how the game is changing is instead of starting on a single pill and then you escalate, right? The stepwise increase is now changing. Why? Because you're creating these window periods of hyperglycemia which could potentially culminate into future complications. So that is why the combination approach, right? Uh, what Ralph DeFrancois in fact proposed, the triple drug combination even at diagnosis, and then you have the newer verified trials, so on and so forth. I think there are multiple data now to show combination approach, right? Now when to initiate a combination, now when the entry A1C is over 9%, you may perhaps think of even a triple drug combination, but not obviously a higher dose of sulfonylurea, maybe a lower dose of sulfonylurea at that point in time, and revisit. Once the patient's blood sugar comes under control, you may want to also knock out the sulfonylurea, right? Dual therapy or triple drug therapy, you can consider in any patient at any journey of diabetes if the desired A1C level is more than 1.5 on the target level. See, newly diagnosed diabetic patients, they may be, you know, they may respond quite easily, right? But after many years into diabetes, after you know one, one or two pills then they may not get easy reduction with the third pill that's a pretty com that's a tough challenge so combination therapy i did mention triple drug combination at an entry level of hbo1c of over nine but remember if patients uh, are in a catabolic state then obviously you would choose insulin before any other any other drug combination some case studies, again, to understand where we can use this triple drug combination. Again, as I mentioned, it is a tricky combination because glimepiride can cause, uh, cause, cause hyperglycemia. So here is a uh, gentleman who's had established diabetes for over 10 years. He's on glimepiride metformin. BMI is also on the higher side. He's got microvascular complications. So this is a patient who's already on sulfonylurea and metformin, right? Now, A1C is also on the high side. So what do you do here? You can actually add SGLT2 a little more easily, right? It's not that you're adding sulfonylurea on top of SGLT2, right? So, and of course, patient has established cardiovascular disease, BMI is higher. The first immediate choice would be an SGLT2 inhibitor. If the A1C is toward the desired level, obviously you would want to perhaps even down titrate the sulfonylurea based on patient's blood sugar levels. So another similar case, I think, I, uh, since my time is closed, I'd like to uh, conclude my talk. So combination therapy, as I mentioned, has to be used very judiciously. Triple drug is here to stay, but not in all patients. You have to use them quite judiciously and always be vigilant of hyperglycemia. With this, I'd like to conclude my talk. Thank you.